What does it mean for a piece of infrastructure to weave a city together? Does it mean creating shared public space for people to gather? Does it mean overcoming a physical barrier between two places? Or does it mean investing in communities or modes of travel that have long been underserved? Weaving the city together was architect Michael Maltzen's goal with his redesign of the 6th Street Viaduct in Los Angeles. In various interviews, he proclaimed that his bridge design aimed to fix some of the mistakes of LA's past. Mistakes like the four freeways that intersect in Boyle Heights, dividing the community. To achieve his goal, Maltzen claimed that his bridge design would prioritize multimodal connections along its span rather than simply replacing the old car-centric bridge. With walkways that connect the bridge's deck to the ground level and park space planned for the future, the new bridge should be able to achieve this, but with one major caveat, its bike lanes. For some context, the construction of the new 6th Street Viaduct in Los Angeles was a nearly $600 million project to replace one of the city's most iconic bridges. The old bridge, built in 1932, was a feature of various LA movies and music videos but was demolished in 2016 due to severe structural issues. The new bridge has 20 arches that will be an iconic feature of LA skyline for the next 100 years or so. The design of the bridge is magnificent, but during its construction, cycling advocates began to point out that protected bike lanes were missing from models and renderings of the bridge. Though details were still murky, the architect himself and the LA Bureau of Engineering assured the public that Class 4 protected bike lanes would eventually be installed on the bridge. This bridge has been designed not with pedestrians and bicycles as an afterthought, but integrated from day one. And during an LA Times interview, Maltzen even mentioned that he was an avid cyclist. And in June 2022, after all the concrete was poured, bike lanes were striped on the bridge. A few weeks later, Protection was installed in the form of rubber curbs and plastic bollards, and the bridge was officially opened to the public during a ceremony on July 9, 2022. The protection is actually quite good compared to most of LA's bike lanes, but many wondered why the concrete wall protecting the sidewalk wasn't simply moved over a few feet to also protect the bike lanes. Although the bollards are better than no protection, they're clearly inadequate for a bridge that's long enough for cars to hit highway speeds. The details on how this design was chosen are sparse, but the reasoning is something like this. Funding requirements stipulated that the shoulders must allow disabled vehicles to pull over in case of an emergency. And also, a certain number of traffic lanes had to be maintained, two in each direction. Since the bridge could only feasibly be so wide due to space constraints and money, a compromise had to be made where the protection for the bike lanes would allow cars to roll over them in case of an emergency. A senior traffic engineer for the LADOT explained these design challenges in some replies on Twitter. Seeing his replies, I have no doubts that there were people working incredibly hard behind the scenes to figure out a solution to meet difficult requirements that were set in stone over 10 years ago. But even if it's only meant for emergencies, the bike lanes are specifically designed to be rolled over by cars, and therefore feel much less effective at protecting cyclists from vehicles than something like a concrete wall. And as a result, the bike lanes feel like typical American painted bicycle gutters and feature grates on the road that make the cycling experience even less pleasant. When over half a billion dollars is being spent on a new bridge in a city that claims to have a vision zero for traffic violence, infrastructure needs to make walking and cycling a priority. And this bridge does treat walking and cycling like a priority at its ramps near its center. The spiral ramp on the north side and boomerang-shaped ramp to the south side both have gentle, accessible inclines that are well shaded. And the vegetation and landscape that will be added to the future park space will make it even better. Unfortunately, the bike lane situation is a lot more bleak at the ends of the bridge. At the Arts District side, there is a somewhat discontinuous bike lane in one direction, and not much at all in the other direction. Also. None of the intersections have any protection at all. The Boyle Heights side is even worse. This entire span of the bridge, which was technically not part of the replacement project, has no bike lanes at all, just sharrows. There is really no protection at all for cyclists, and one direction crosses a freeway on-ramp. It's a true shame how hard the future park space under the bridge will be to access if people don't feel safe getting there. 
and it'll be even worse if someone does get hurt or killed by a car. The not yet open bike lanes on the Long Beach International Gateway Bridge show just how much better the 6th Street bike lanes could have been. Also in LA County, this bridge's bike lane completely separates cyclists from traffic along its main span. The end of the bridge towards Long Beach offers protection in the form of concrete and metal barriers. Here, the infrastructure itself makes few compromises since the bike lanes were a priority from the start and do not have to share space with the roadway. As for the 6th Street Viaduct, the design is pretty much locked in with construction coming to a close, but the city of LA should be able to reconfigure the road in the future to better suit the needs of cyclists. If the requirement to have a lane for disabled vehicles cannot be changed, perhaps they could convert the outer travel lanes to bus-only lanes, which would keep the frequent 18 bus moving smoothly while allowing better bike lane protection to be added. Also, the traffic engineer from the Twitter replies mentioned earlier pointed out that extending the bike lane into Boyle Heights would require removing a travel lane to be feasible at all. And if that's the only way to fix the most dangerous portion of the bike lane, it seems like an obvious change to make. For the past six years, the bridge has had no traffic lanes due to construction, so it's hard to imagine the impact of removing a lane would be so severe. Even with the grand architectural approach to its design, the 6th Street Viaduct fails to be a truly multimodal bridge. Despite its grand vision, a system of entities that don't work well together settled on inadequate bike lanes for LA's newest bridge. The LA Department of Transportation, the contractor building the bridge, and Caltrans all had different motivations and requirements that prevented the best possible and obvious outcome despite spending loads of money to build the bridge. It's just a shame that when this happens, the most vulnerable road users lose the most. Still. I have high hopes for LA and its future as a cycling city. The weather is just too good, and substantial investments in bike infrastructure are being made in other areas. People want quality cycling infrastructure. We're just missing the leadership to make it happen. But for now, it's difficult to watch such a high-profile project fail so spectacularly. The system that got us here may be broken, but we must hold our leaders accountable to find a way to do better. I just caught that. Oh my god. There's no way I just caught that. Oh my god, that's it. Ah!